Hypertension, high blood pressure, is a serious health risk. A lot of people don't even know they've got it, but it's linked with a increased risk of heart attacks, increased risk of strokes, increased risk of chronic kidney disease, and many, many other aspects. And of course, it's a part of what we call metabolic syndrome. And the most important aspect is if we can understand what causes it, what are the major players in causing hypertension, then we can take some really simple steps because not everybody's hypertension is the same. As you'll see, if there are many factors that can cause it, then there are many things that each of us can do, but may not work because that may not be the thing helping us. And one of the reasons why medications aren't very effective in this area is that they're trying to treat the biochemistry of it without treating the bigger picture. So let me give you a, a little bit of a picture. The first thing about hypertension is that there are three major driving forces that are linked together. Inflammation, oxidation, and gut. Now, the gut is a major driver, and I'll speak a little bit on that in another video, but the gut, if we can fix the gut, then we can make a huge difference to what it means in terms of our overall health and lowering blood pressure. But coming back to it, with those in mind, what are the things that cause that oxidation, inflammation, and gut problems? And it starts up here with the number one culprit, which is sugar. There is no doubt that sugar, yes, sugar is the culprit. And unfortunately, for 50 years, that was kind of hidden by the sugar industry by blaming fats and blaming salt and blaming anyone else who came along and not taking responsibility. The sugar industry has been criminally negligent. And now the science over the last 20 years has pointed the finger smack bang at sugar, 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 all the added sugars, not the sugar you get in fruit, okay? That's fantastic because it comes with all the nutrients locked into it, but it's the sugar. So the number one thing you can do to reduce your hypertension is cut out added sugars, cut out any with sugar in it. If it's the sugar in the tea and the coffee, okay, great. If it's the sugar that's hidden in all the soft drinks, there is a direct link with sugar sweetened beverages and hypertension. The more you have, the higher the hypertension. Now that also, by the way, occurs, believe it or not, for the, the artificial sweetness too, because they muck up the microbiome, which I talk about in other videos, but they muck up the microbiome and also increase hypertension. So at the end of the day, what we wanna do is get rid of sugar, get rid of refined sugar, get rid of any added sugar or food that has added sugar or processed foods. The second one is that the big driver is refried oils. Now, what's really interesting is if we want to create in the laboratory, and a long time ago I used to work in the laboratory, in the laboratory, if they want to create mice who have hypertension, the two major ways, there are lots of other ways I'll talk about, but the two major ways is by giving them refried oil. So they boil up the oils, they give it to the mice, the mice develop hypertension. Then we can work on a drug to reverse the hypertension that was caused by the refried oils or caused by the sugar. Now, why don't we just get rid of the refried oil? Do you get the picture here? I'm giving you the basics of this, the fundamental stuff that, in fact, most people don't understand. In fact, I don't think anybody knows this whole picture. And so what we've got, sugar and refried oil, stress, everybody knows hypertension can play, um, uh, is, is affected by stress, short-term stress, long-term stress. And when people tell me, oh, yes, I manage my stress, I, I just say, look, I can't help you then. Um, it's about being calm in your life. And yes, I have stressful events, and guess what? I spent a lot of time bringing myself back into a state of calm with meditation. So that explains one of the simpler things you can do. Some deep breathing exercises, some meditation, anything that helps you bring calm into your life and lower that stress because stress is a big player and stress is a big player and the actual incidence of strokes and heart attack is a result of the hypertension stress link. So have a think about it. Then we go on to some of the more hidden ones like uh, poor sleep, people don't realize um, how much that can do for your overall ill health in, in terms of increasing cancer rates and increase of every, you know, heart attacks and strokes, but absolutely linked with hypertension. And there are so many things you can do for that. And here's a classic example. If you get off the sugar, by the way, that can help you sleep, uh, lower your stress, it can help you sleep. So all of these things I'm saying work in a positive way together. And that's why it's a total program. Now, you can choose which ones of these you want to do. That's up to you. But at the end of the day, there are so many things and so many steps that will benefit you. So 
getting better sleep. Melatonin is a fantastic supplement. Absolutely safe, absolutely safe. The, the literature on the safety of it, um, I, I, I've, I've seen some media outbursts um, funded by the drug company saying melatonin is dangerous. I'm sorry, it has such a high safety record. So melatonin for sleep, absolutely. Um, inactivity is another one. Uh, we need to get up and we need to move. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It doesn't have to be going to yoga. It doesn't have to be, you know, going for a marathon run. It just means being active. And being active is one of the strongest factors for lowering hypertension. And in fact, when we look at weight gain, people who have extra weight, every extra kilo of weight, um, and some people might have 10, 20, 30, or even more kilos of weight on, is actually causing the heart to stress more, to push the blood around the body, which is causing the hypertension. Not to mention the fact that the extra weight contributes to inflammation, oxidation, and, and gut illnesses or dysbiosis as well. So we've got the extra weight. So what can we do there? First thing is, I've got a video on simple strategies to lose weight. Have a look at that. And the first thing, it's not about calorie counting, it's just about eating healthily. Get off the processed foods. If it's in a packet, there's a pretty good chance it's not what I would call the food. What's interesting though, when they've done studies on activity, inactivity and extra weight, what they've found is that if you carry extra weight and you are hypertense as a result of it, activity, even without losing extra weight, outweighs this one. So first and foremost, get out there and be active and then look at losing weight. Then we've got dehydration. Now this is a really, really simple one. The body works on moisture, on hydration, on water. So we need to keep drinking. We need to be drinking constantly all the time, hot weather more, cold weather less. But we need to use more active, you drink more. There, is a, there are various formulas, but they vary how big you are, how much weight you carry, a whole round. but you need to drink more. There are studies which show that um, in, a, in a group of hypertense uh, individuals where they just gave them a half a litre of water a day, half a litre, and about 10% of them improved, lowered their hypertension enough to be uh, of no longer concern or on pharmaceuticals. Wow, 10% improved by just having some extra water. Now I'd suggest you add in some green tea there, um, or some tea, or even coffee, believe it or not, because of the benefits they have for hypertension, but absolutely dehydration. Then you've got a bit of an unknown one here that people don't realize, but lots of pharmaceuticals can increase blood pressure. And all pharmaceuticals have side effects, often serious and even deadly side effects, okay? So that's why I'm encouraging people to look at the lifestyle things first, because the medications you're on can play havoc with you. And of course, um, always speak to your health professional about these things and the ideas that you're doing, but look at the science behind it. And the science shows that there are a whole raft of antidepressants. And I've actually put this up at some of my presentations and uh, there are people who come up to me and said, yes, I've been on antidepressants and my blood pressure went up, my weight went up and all of these other things. Uh, at this point, I do want to make it clear, I am a research professor. I'm not a doctor of medicine. I've spent more time at university. I've spent more time researching, in fact, 40 years looking into journals. And as I said, even I've done some of the research in the old days in the laboratory and out measuring and monitoring. So we've, we've, we've got antidepressants, corticosteroids, which are commonly used. And, and these can be fantastic, the corticosteroids for, for you know, lowering the inflammation and so on. But you have to understand that they also have side effects. Contraceptive pill, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and even migraine medications. Always look at the warnings and the side effects on the packages. And go to your pharmacist who know a lot more about it and the interactions of them, um, and see if any of these might be increasing your blood pressure. Smoking is another one, and smoking plays havoc with hypertension, plays havoc with the arteries, many aspects, the oxidation, the inflammation as a result of smoking, and of course, hypertension as a result of it. So smoking is an absolute no-no. And uh, decades ago, I was involved in measuring and monitoring smoking and campaigning against it. Uh, and I still do whenever I can. So then we go to things like your toxins. And what people don't understand is toxins and this is how I got into my research in terms of nutrition, is toxins work 
in the majority of cases by blocking nutritional pathways. And so I went from toxins, understanding how toxins and teaching all about toxic substances like fluoride, and then realizing that fluoride actually blocks essential nutrients, of, let's say minerals, it blocks uh, magnesium and zinc and selenium, which all are all essential for your heart muscle and your arteries, by the way. And so, so um, uh, fluoride and all these other toxins out there block nutritional pathways. That's, that's the interaction between toxins and nutrition. And so fluoride causes high blood pressure. So if you've got high blood pressure, you're in a high fluoro, fluoride water area. Uh, if you're consuming fluoride in your toothpaste, then guess what? Yes, it is. It's linked with many other conditions too, by the way. And it, look, this isn't going to increase it for everybody, but this is the whole picture. And phthalates. Now, there are many studies on toxins and blood pressure. I, I could mention air pollution, okay? Particulate pollution, um, uh, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, and so on from, from vehicle exhausts and so on lead to uh, uh, increases in blood pressure. But I don't want to go into those ones because they're ones we often find hard to avoid. This one, phthalates, these are kind of plastic chemicals that they put in all of your plastic chemicals. So all of your personal care products, makeups, uh, it's in your bottles and your jar, uh, your, everything's made out of plastic. But all of those products that you put on your skin thinking that it's good for you, well, it's actually not because it's full of these toxic chemicals. And one of them is a group called phthalates. And at least a half a dozen of those are linked with increasing blood pressure. Now, at the level you get, it's probably not going to be of concern in blood pressure, but it's that's added onto that, added onto that, added onto that, added onto that. So what we want to do and what I want to encourage people is to get safer products with safer products, getting rid of things like the phthalates. Now, here's an unusual one. Uh, infections. There's a whole body of research coming up now showing infections, particularly gut infections. Helicobacter, and I, I also came across a, a couple of studies on candida which is a fungi that affects the gut, the oral uh, microbiome right down through the gut and so on, candida. Um, but the most studies are done on helicobacter and helicobacter is a big player in hypertension. So if you've got gut issues, e.g. reflux, and a lot of people with hypertension do because they're all linked together. Reflux or IBD, IBS, you, you know what these mean if you've got them, then it may be helicobacter and helicobacter may be contributing to your increased blood pressure as well. Now, again, very few people know this, so they're not gonna look into it and it's well worth taking it, but there are dozens of studies on the role of helicobacter and uh, increased blood pressure. Now, the same can happen for any underlying chronic condition that you got. In fact, even during a, a bout of influenza, so if you've got a serious bout of uh, the influenza, flu, um, any viral infection or bacterial infection, a serious bout, it can increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. So important to understand that because and what does that do? Because they lead to inflammation, oxidation, and again, destruction of the, the gut microbiome. And now here we get up to, back onto the dietary component. And a lot of people have been told that Get off the sodium chloride, get off the, the salt, you know, those table salts that you add in. And I'm not a big fan of adding just the normal table salt into your foods and so on, but it's wrong. They've got it the wrong way. They've targeted salt as the enemy when we really know it's these two, they're the biggest food style enemies. And what happens, it's the salt, the sodium to potassium ratio. It's the sodium potassium ratio that's more important than the sodium chloride. So what we find in the studies, which is what I am always reviewing and looking into, I think I've reviewed about a thousand studies on hypertension over the last two years. That's a lot of time. And what the studies are clearly showing is the sodium has to be balanced with the potassium. And when you lower the sodium chloride table salt, it has a very minimal effect. So you probably spent the last three years cutting out the salt, cutting out the salt, and you haven't seen a change in your blood pressure. Well, that's because you haven't been increasing the potassium. And the great thing is potassium is really easy to increase. It's, uh, in, banana, it's in virtually all of your fruits and lots of your veggies, but you can get some really high levels in things like bananas and dates and rock melons and melons and so on. And they've got lots of other benefits too, by the way. They're, they're, they're all marvelous in many aspects, okay? So what you want to do is increase the potassium. Now, there is one food out there. It's a bit of a superfood that nobody knows called Moringa, M-O-R-I-N-G-A. 
and all of these, by the way, anything I mentioned, you can get at the health food stores, you can get them online, but Moringa, uh, I, I grow a little Moringa tree out the back and uh, I get some Moringa powder in. And Moringa is a superfood and it really is one of the richest sources of potassium and one of the simplest ways of lowering blood pressure. In fact, the studies show that as soon as you increase the potassium ratio, it pretty well brings down blood pressure by up to 22 millimeters of mercury. So that's about 22 points, that's huge, okay? Now, on the average, it'll, it'll be five or six or eight or nine, for some people even more, but it has a big impact. So my, my message here, first and foremost, it's not the salt, it's a salt potassium ratio. Then we go to poor nutrition, because there's a, a large body of evidence now coming out from studies where they look at people consuming a high inflammatory diet. So they've got an index now and they rate the foods and they say, oh, high inflammatory diet. These people are high on that high inflammatory index and they see that they're linked with metabolic syndrome, heart attack, strokes, hypertension, high increase of cancers across the board. So the first thing we want to do is get on the diet that is low inflammatory. Remember, inflammation, oxidation and gut and the low inflammatory diet. And that's your fruits, veggies, nuts, herbs, spices, all those, your beans, all of those are low inflammatory. Whereas the processed foods up here, these ones, the processed food and poor nutrition is inflammatory. So what we need to do is change our eating habits. I've given you a scenario over here to cover all of the major causes of hypertension. Forget the biochemistry, I can describe that to you if you want, but all of these factors play a role. So which one is it affecting you? Is it the stress? Is it the sugar? Is it the refried oil or both of these and this one together? Then if it is, you know how to take the steps to lower blood pressure.